Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Bob Crawford, and he is KA0YKC. He says, My cousin David AC5UW and I can talk to each other on 14310 most of the time, but we can't do it on any other frequency. I'm assuming by that he means any other band. He is in Texas and I am in Iowa. Sometimes he's 5'9 and I am the same. Other times he's 5'9 and I am, quote, in the dumps, meaning his signal is very weak at his brother's station. Um, and uh, other, it, other times it's the other way around. Can you explain this to us? Thanks for your answer. Before we jump into the answer, I'd like to pay a special thanks to David, AC3HT, for being one of my newest patrons. Um, you too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and looking for a way that works for you. Now let's take a look at this question here and uh, the answer involves what we might call the limits of the word reciprocity. Um, for something to, reciprocity means that it's the same going either way. So if you take an antenna and it's 3 dB gain in this direction, it will be by reciprocity 3 dB gain for incoming signals. Okay? Now, often we assume that the path is reciprocal. But that is uh, what I'll call, um, it's sort of a well-kept secret that the path is not necessarily the same path. In other words, you transmit, your brother receives, but when he transmits, his signal can take a different path and it may miss you entirely. Let's sort of see how this works by looking at the board. Here's the green earth. Now, obviously it doesn't um, rotate that much. Here you are in, where did you say? Iowa. Iowa. And Texas. Okay, now you are obviously using ionospheric propagation. Now the ionosphere is actually quite low. I mean, we tend to think of it as way up here, we draw it high. It's actually 75 to 300 miles high, okay? So your signal goes up, hits something, comes down here, comes up here and comes down here. This is what we call multi-hop. From Iowa to Texas, you could be experiencing that. Now, if you look at the ionosphere itself, we like to think of it as though it's an iron shield. It's no such thing. Uh, it's in the part of the atmosphere. At this height in the atmosphere, almost all, and by almost all, I mean well over 95%, close to 100% of the actual sensible atmosphere is below you, okay? Uh, I live at 7,000 feet, that's just over a mile, and I'd say about a third of the atmosphere is above me-ish, uh, and uh, two-thirds below me. So the pressure here is low. Up here at this altitude here, um, we have a field here with very, very, very low amounts of uh, oxygen and nitrogen that are at this altitude. And they're very susceptible um, to ultraviolet radiation. Now the ultraviolet radiation causes these oxygen 
and nitrogen atoms, it knocks electrons off of these. So that creates a positive ion here, positive ion here, and free electrons wandering around. Now, the velocities of these paths in the upper atmosphere can be quite high, and it's fed by the ultraviolet. At night, the ionosphere tends to rise, okay? And so you might get a single hop over there, and then during the day, the upper layers um, combine, or actually split apart into the F1 and F2 layer. At night, it's the F layer. Now, here is the problem. What you're bouncing off of, you're not bouncing off of anything. You have a layer here where the index of refraction, we'll just call it I for index, and I for index. This one is different from this. So the density, which is what causes it, the index of refraction changes here. So your signals come up and encounter a different index of refraction. And as they encounter that, the signal's actually bent back down. So it's actually refracted down. It's not bent. It doesn't bang against anything. It's bent back down. Now this drawing right here assumes that the ionosphere is constant. It's not. You could have a cloud of electrons here and a cloud over here and a cloud up here and so on. And you could actually get a bounce like that. And your brother, his main signal could come up like this and like that. And so maybe he'd hear you and you do not hear him or vice versa just because of the weird nature of the ionosphere. This is the bottom line here. The propagation path is not reciprocal. Your signal, which of course goes out in all directions and gets scattered in a, quite a variety of directions here, may hit your brother strong and may not. Similarly, when he passes, he's coming at it from a different direction, okay? So he's hitting a different density orientation than you were hitting. Now we tend to talk of the path of a signal as a line. Really, you've got, you're spraying it out like this. The stuff down here doesn't go very far because it's attenuated in the atmosphere, but you get all kinds of reflections and stuff like this, some of which will reinforce each other and some will not. This is called multipath, okay? And uh, we're used to it happening at VHF with mountains and things like that, but it also happens with the ionosphere and the ionosphere is constantly changing. That's why it happens usually to work well at some times of the day and sometimes at not. If the ionosphere is reasonably well formed, okay, you can count on some level of reciprocity. If it goes one way, it'll come back the other way the same way. But sometimes it'll hit this at an angle and then these waves will cancel each other and you'll end up getting a stronger signal down here. Okay, so, so Bob, I hope that helps answer your question. The fact is that uh, natural phenomenon, we usually simplify as people because it's easier for us to understand. But if you think about how the ionosphere forms, you've got uh, the ultraviolet rays knocking electrons off the oxygen and nitrogen atoms. Na na uh, yeah, nitrogen. And um, so electrons, it's possible for all the electrons to go one way. You've got this constant flux of things happening up there. All right. And it is very possible that it's lumpy. If you look up at a cloud base above you, and you look at the bottom of the cloud, 
and they're like cirrus clouds or something that are up. They're, they're very smooth. They're very smooth. They don't do anything. But if you look at the clouds that are cumulus clouds, they got great big lumps on them. And so light can be deflected in different ways. And it's kind of what's going on in the ionosphere. Now, scientists like to measure this sort of stuff because they like to measure about everything. And uh, they have what they call ionosondes or ionospheric sounders. And these will send a signal up straight up like a uh, radar and catch the beams coming down and so on. And this is constantly changing and they can take a look at what's constantly changing and so forth. So there you have it. The ionosphere is not as reciprocal as we would like it to be. And so sometimes we can have occasions, and, and this could be why you could hear a DX station really strongly, but they don't hear you, okay? That is why uh, that sort of thing can happen. And this is part of the fun of HF, is because we're dealing with a very fickle ionosphere, and it's fun to see if we can get a signal through two ways, um, and uh, try to learn more about how the ionosphere behaves. So there you have it. If you would like to become a supporter of this channel, you can go to decastlercom slash support. There's a way to do a tip jar, a recurring tip in there, also a link to Patreon. And also if you come to the live streams, you can throw a few bucks in the channel funds uh, while you are there too, from anything as low as a dollar on up. And I'm grateful for all of it. I'm grateful for you. And until we next meet, 73.